hostel which I'm going to talk about is uh, this panel assembly builder. So obviously, uh, yes, most of the components in Tecla, when you add them, um, you know, when you use this uh, system component or custom component, automatically become uh, sub-assembly to the panel. But there are certain objects we still do it, uh, we still have to add them. And it is time consuming. The reason is that because they, for most of the free cost projects we do is it's quite large. And if you have to go through and check every one of them, to make sure all these objects are added as sub assembly it's a time consuming process so that is the reason what actually these tool it does you just have to select the panel you can select a single panel or multiple panels it will read the objects within the bounding box of the panel and it will automatically add them as sub assembly just for an example um i'm taking these two here right and uh you can see this, uh, all these uh, uh, objects are not added as a sub-assembly. Just for a quick uh, catch up, just, uh, I'm just hiding this. So can you see this, uh, these ferals are visible. That means these are not added as sub-assembly. So what I'm going to do is instead of adding it manually, and again, another thing is that you see this plate is uh, actually, this is a loose, loose part. And this is inside the bonding box of the panel. I don't want this panel to be added as an assembly to the panel. So that is the reason in this, I mean, uh, along with this package, package, I have already created the objects.inp file that is user defined attributes. So what I have done is if I open the user defined attributes, Okay, so you can see this panel assembly tab page. I, if I can set this option to yes, that means this plate will not be added as a sub assembly when I run this application. So I just select this one and these parts. And modify this. And then I'm going to just select the panel as a part, the switch, which is very important. And then you click add a sub assembly. Okay, so all these objects are added as sub assembly now. So you can run, you can select multiple panels and run this one. Generally, what I do is when I do the precast project, I select all the panels at the end of uh, modeling and then run this one. So if I go and hide it, obviously you can see you will not be able, you will you will not see this uh, all the embedded objects. Can you see now? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. And these plates now this is not added as a sub assembly because even though it is inside the bond, it is within the bonding box of the panel. I changed that option to panel assembly loose part. Okay. So as I said, you can run this application to all the, uh, select all the panels and run this application. And the next tool, panel sub assembly position. This is very, very important because uh, you just have to assign uh, the near side or far side of this, uh, uh, of this ferrules based on the form, based on the form phase of the panel. So let me just uh, select this one. Okay. Or what I would do is, this is on Bridgie. Just for clarity, I'm just opening the grid view. Now,
okay this actually shows the form face of the panel okay and uh, now we go and redraw the view and uh, if i select this one so this is near side okay but what i'm going to do is i'll change the form face I change this one from front to back. So now the form face is on the other side. Can you see this? Then all these embedded objects based on the form face, it is supposed to make this one as a far side. And uh, sometimes it, ha it happens, you know, it is, it is the responsibility of the detailer to go and make those changes. So it is again time consuming because even in one panel, there will be plenty of uh, uh, embedded objects. So what, what we can do is, um, if I again go back, this is the panel subassembly position. So you can run for the pick the panel. What you can do is you can, you can just click this uh, button and then select and run it or you can also select the multiple panels and then click selected panel. So what I'm going to do is, um, before I run this, let me change this one to near side and far side so that you can clearly see. Okay, no, sorry, this. Okay, let me just keep it as it is okay right now let me quickly show you so this is far side and uh, this one is near side okay once i run this application it will automatically change all these ferrules to near far side and this one to near side again you just have to select the panel you can select the multiple panels and run it this switch which is very important keep the select objects in components and click selected panel so because there are a lot of objects inside the panel probably it might take a few seconds to read the form face and assign the correct position to this objects. It's done. Now, previously it was near side. Now, if I go and enquire this part now, can you see it is far side now? So the system will automatically update all these. Now, this was far side before. Now it is near side. Okay, and the next tool is uh, again the same tool, but you have an option. You can check it and then you can update it. So if I go back to the next one is the panel subassembly position check. Okay, what exactly it does? Again, I will change this form face to, okay, let me just run this one first and then show you. Check for selected. So that means, okay, it's still processing. Yeah, so the list is empty. That means all these objects or positions are correct. Just for an example, if I change this one again, changing this user different attributes. to friend and modify this now if i run this check it will list out all the embedded objects
Okay, you can see because I changed the changed the font face from back to front. I think front to back, whatever it is. Now, if you wanted to update it, so I can select all these ones and click update. It will automatically update it now. So these both are same. Actually, this application uh, you can check it, whereas this application you you can directly run to update uh, uh, the position of all the ferals or ferals or casting plates or broad cubes whatever it is okay and uh, the next one this panel support obviously if you are working in collaboration with the with the steel detailers or if you are doing both steel and precast and this will be definitely a time saver for you okay so this is the one okay so what what this application actually does you can pick multiple panels and then pick the position it will automatically create an angle and then you have four options let me show you again switch which is very important i pick the first panel and second panel you can pick multiple panels if even if you, if the angle or channel if it is extending to two or three panels you can also pick the number of panels and then press the middle mouse and then you pick the first point you pick the first point here and second point okay so here you can see so it creates an angle it creates a uh, you know a cleat and then the bolt and also ferrules See the advantage is that all these ferrules are automatically added as a subassembly to the panel, so you don't have to do it manually. And second thing is that based on the form face, it will also assign whether it is a near side or far side. Okay. And uh, now once I double click, obviously there are little bit of okay. Well, I'm just having some minor issue with this, but. Uh, um, I'll just show because this picture is missing. I'll go and update it. But let me just show you these options. So if you select cleat with washer, and you can have either one side or both the sides, either near side or far side or both the sides, and you have an option with washer plate. So here you can see it also adds the washer plate. Or if you just need a bolt, you can go and select the bolt, modify this. So now it comes with the bolt. Obviously, you can also change this one to chem set. And the next option is uh, you can also have a clip plate here. So there are four different options. And uh, uh, and the other one is, uh, you know, now there are six of them are here. If I change this option to by panel, what exactly it does, it makes six uh, clip plates on this panel and six clip plates on this panel because of this number and you also have an option either you can have target spacing or exact spacing let me choose exact number and click modify because the option is by panel now can you see this mm -hmm. so it will automatically uh, you know add number of them and uh, okay um, what I, I mean I understand the picture is not visible but the this component is uh, is exactly the same but you can see the picture here then i will explain this one after this okay you can see the same picture you will see it in the other component and also you have you will have an option to okay you will have an option to change the clip plate obviously i have to go there and change this option then it will automatically enable this. Uh, yeah, it will automatically enable all these options. And uh, if you don't need, uh, okay, you have an option for the ferrule. Suppose if you are using, um, you know, something else, like you can use this custom component, and then it will give an option for you to choose uh, from the component catalog because the reason why I have given this option because it is not only for the oscillation environment maybe if someone is using this application for some other environment so they can choose their own uh, connection and when you are adding this one to 
Okay, let me just go back to the other one. This is the one I'm actually running it now. So if you wanted to add a Kemp set, what exactly you need to do? I change this option to bold and then single side, modify this. And uh, um, I go to the federal option, make this one none and then bold. I change this option to Kemp set. Oh, okay. I don't have a Kemp set here. Okay. Okay, but uh, you can add a Kim set. Obviously, you can also change the rotation. Okay, so the option is you just have to make this option to none. Okay, the next one is uh, this tool. This actually, suppose if you already have an angle and you wanted to add bolts and uh, um, you wanted to add bolts and ferrules to that, just for an example, um, give me a second. Um, it's on grid 5. Okay, I'm opening another view for clarity. Okay, now you can take a look at this. You already have an angle, but you wanted to add a connection to this. Okay, as I said, it, you can add this one to angle or C section, that doesn't matter. Um, I just copy this one. Okay, now once I double click, uh, okay, apply. Now pick all the panels as a primary part one, two, and three. Press the middle mouse and then pick the angle. Suppose if you have an angle on the other side, you can also pick the angle on the other side and press the middle mouse. So the system will automatically create this connection. Here you can see. Okay, sorry, this uh, bolt, it was already there. So I delete this one now. So because I copied this angle. Now here you can see, again, you have four options. Either you can add a washer plate and then you can also have with bolt. And yes, of course, that comes with the ferrules. And then you also have an option for the clip plate. So again, continuous and by panel. So you can say how many you need on each panel. So now it is six, but it was continuous. If I change this one to panel and make it five, that means in total, it will create 15, five, five, five. Okay. And the other thing is that when I do this, it will, it, as I said, these ferrules will be automatically added as a sub assembly to this one. And these ferrules will be added to this respective panel. So we don't have to add these ones manually. Just for an example, I just go and hide this one, or maybe I hide the middle one. So you don't see the ferrules here. That means all those ferrules are automatically added as a sub assembly to that particular respective panel. And the next one is, uh, okay, um, Feral at bolt location. Okay, so again, when you receive the steel project, steel detailing project from the client and you are just doing a precast project, obviously in that project, you will have uh, angle, also you will have this bolt. So now you have to add ferrules to this exact position. Again, it's, uh, it's you know, you have to rotate the view and create different views and pick the two points, add as a sub assembly and assigning near side and far side. You can see you have to do the multiple several steps to complete one panel. Whereas this one, what exactly it does? I select this federal set bolt location. Again, you can pick the multiple panels. Okay, there are three panels are here. I select all the three panels, press the middle mouse and this is a single bolt group. So I click the bolt and then press the middle mouse again. Can you see the spherules? Here you can see. And here. And here. So now the advantage is that if I make any changes to the number of bolts, how do I do it? So sorry, I might have, okay, my calculation may not be, just to show you. So what I do is I just make it, uh, this is 300 and then modify or otherwise I'll do it for a single one. 
Oh, okay. Let me just, uh, I mean, this calculation is not right. Let me undo this. And what I do is, uh, I pick this panel, press the middle mouse, because I'm going to create only to this. Okay, now it's all good. So I just explode this one. Okay, it's all good now. So I'm selecting this once again, select this panel, press the middle mouse, and then select the bolt, and then press the middle mouse. So here you can see, if I change this number of bolts, so once I double click, uh, I change this one to six or seven, okay, and change this distance to 300, and then modify. Can you see the moment you change the number of bolts, it will automatically update the ferrules according to you know uh, the number of bolts. Again, all these ferrules are automatically added as a sub assembly, and then the near side and far side system will take care of everything. So the recent one I developed the one yesterday. Um, this is the one um, I close it. Uh, this one, ferrules on panel face. See, sometimes we add ferrules not only on the face of it, but also on the side face or maybe at the bottom or maybe at the top. So every time we just have to change the position or pick two points to do it. Again, I'm not very happy doing things manually. So this application, you can pick the face in which face you wanted to add these ferrules. Just for an example, uh, you can see the system is asking me to pick the face. I pick this face and then you can pick the position. So just for an example, um, you know, I pick the bottom one here, but you, and then the top. Okay, now you can see because this is how it is going to be facing. And uh, now again, I take this one. This time I'm going to do it on the top face. Okay, I pick this and then I pick from here to there. Okay, anyway, it's going to do it because the position you pick, which is very important, but you can see the direction here. That's what it is, it is very important. And uh, if I want to do it at the bottom, I rotate this and then pick the bottom one. And this time I pick the center of this. It's okay from here. To there and now you can see so you don't have to change it or you don't have to pick two points to do it do it or number of uh, number of ferrules so once you double click it gives an option to uh, make it uh, spacing and then if you need two very rare chances sometimes you may need to have two so i give some big gauge distance here it will automatically make two here so this is quite, uh, you know, because I have seen uh, these type of uh, ferrules application in, in recent projects. So this helps a lot. And very common questions I receive is how we can control the numbering system for the panels because you just wanted to assign the panels in sequence. And uh, what happens is that uh, we don't have any controlling at this stage. Different people are using different methods. They just open the user different attributes of each panel and then type the value in minus. Maybe the first panel, they type it minus one, the second panel, minus two, minus three. And, uh, um, you know, that's again a very time consuming process. Let me just go back to uh, 3D view. And I'm going to take only the inside panels just for, uh, you know, um, uh, for clarity. Let me hide all those panels outside. Okay, now, fine. 
Now, I'm going to assign the panels in the same order that I picked. So if I come to the unique numbering system, Yeah, see, uh, I just double click and open this. So you can start the prefix number and you can start the number. Again, you can stop it anytime. And then uh, suppose, for example, if you assign one and two this and you stopped it and later on when you come and start, maybe for these panels, you can start from number three. Okay, and you can also change the prefix. And now just for an example, I just make it as a WP. Okay, and the start number is one. What exactly it happens when I pick this members, you need to change the switch to assemblies. I go to the user different attributes of this. And if I go to the numbering system, the system will automatically assign numbers to this prefix number and start number here. Again, you don't have to create this objects.inp file because it is also included in the package when you install this application. It will automatically install the objects.inp file on your system. And then next time when you reopen Tecla, obviously, uh, you know, reopen the model, you can see this tab page. So now what I'm going to do is I click assign the switch, which is very important. Now I pick this one. This is my first number and this is my second. This is my third, fourth, fifth. I just, uh, you know, I pick the order, sequence order. So it's, it's your choice. How do you want to pick up this? So once I click, can you see it says WP one, two, three, and oh, I missed this one. Oh no, it's three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, now when I start this panel, I can, you know what I can do is, okay, I wanted to start this one from 11th. I click assign, and then I start picking these one, two, and three. Can you see this? So now when you perform numbering, the system will assign the same one. So now if I go back, uh, numbering so I said this option here I said I want system to read this uh, user different attributes when it assigns numbering to the panels pre prefix assembly and start number now let me just go and uh, okay I'm going to run only for the selected group name okay um, if I go to this let me clear the numbers if something is there Okay, now I can just right click and redraw the view. And then I perform numbering now. Okay, it's done. And uh, maybe I'll quickly create this report. Okay, sorry. Okay, so ignore the CP1, CP2, 3, because these are the outside panels. But when I click on this WP2, can you see? It shows a sequence. Right? So that's how you can control the numberings. Uh, you know, using this application, you can very well control the panel numbering. So you don't have to open the user different attributes and type the value in minus or sometimes chances are that you might give the same duplicate number and system will throw some error. So all these, uh, you know, unwanted things, you can avoid it. So the next one is, um, um, I'm going to give you the quick erection sequence. So again, this, uh, this erection sequence, obviously, if you wanted to create some video and send it to the, um, you know, uh, people working at the side just to show them the erection sequence. This application again will help you a lot. Just if I type erection and uh, once I double click on this. Okay, let me just clear the numbers. So there may be something there. Okay, I clear. It's clearing the number. Okay, good. Now, if I, um, again, I click assign. This is my stage one, one and two. Now, I press the middle mouse to close it. So that is stage one, one, stage one and two. And the next one is second stage. I assign, maybe I take these members one, two and three. 
that is my stage two and the next one is stage three and next i change this one to number four okay so there are four stages here if you want to run the presentation i type with the space and then click show can you see now yep very cool shrub yeah so it shows the sequence of uh, erection okay and not only that you can also create a report so either for report for all and report for the selected objects yes it is done so if i go back to the reports folder um, let me just open it here Okay, so here is the report. It says in stage one, there are two members. In stage two, there are three members. It gives you the ID numbers here, stage three and stage four. So all these reports are everything which is included in the package. Once you install, the system will automatically install this report um, and the objects.imp file onto your system. And uh, let me just move on to the uh, drawing tool. So the level and COG dimension, yes, of course, sometimes we just have to add the COG dimension in the panel drawing. So uh, again, this one, you don't have to do it uh, one by one because I set this one in the model. You can select all the cast unit drawing and run this application. But anyway, for demo purpose, I'm just going to open the drawing and show you. So once I double click, so here you can see by default it is reading the cog dimension properties so if i go back to um let me just open.